The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 16th, the Magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. Well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Now send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to just simply put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and any, every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, a little bit of a mixed bag out here. That mix is coming from the Dow and the New York Stock Exchange. They're the only ones trading positive. 50 points and 17 points, respectively. s and is off 11. NASDAQ 100, 127 to the downside. Russell's off 5. Semi's off 36. Tranny's down 99. Gold's trading out 1814. That's up 6 bucks. Silver's up 53 cents. That's 2.5%. She's trading out at 21.54. That's after forming a TD9 count on Friday. I believe it was Friday that it formed, Thursday or Friday. Light Sweet Crude is up three bucks, uh, trading out at 113.57. Looks like he wants to continue to move higher. Natural gas is trading out at 771. The 30 year Treasury trading at 139.30. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. You got um, Man Tech International Group up 12 bucks. You've got Eli Lilly up 10 bucks. Uh, John Deere and Company, nine. Sagan. Is up 840. Is that Carl Sagan? And to the downside, you got Booking Holdings off 50, Amazon 41, Shopify 40, Tesla 41, and Google's off 37 buckaroonie. So, where do we want to begin? I'll tell you, let's just do this. Let's begin with just simply the first question that came in. Then I'll simply stay ahead and we'll go to the general markets. This one coming in from Mark. Mark D writes in and he says, uh, if you'd be so kind to give uh, insight on Enbridge, ENB is a ticker symbol. So, let's just simply pull up uh, that. You're in, yeah, I'm in both. Your inside and Enbridge, both. Hmm. Um, looking to see, does it still have some strength to keep going up? Uh, do you see it topping? Listen to recording, no problem. So we take a look at Enbridge Capital. First, we've got the black background screens up. Yep. And price right now is just simply consolidating with inside its daily and weekly profiles out there. And the daily, it's a new profile that formed today. So your support level mark is 43.12, resistance 45.32. Weekly chart. Price last week got down, tested, rejected support at 4202. Your resistance level is 4675. But the real question is, does this have more legs? So let's go switch over to our eight panel, multi time frame screen out here to take a look at Enbridge Capital, get a feel for its communicating to you and I. First, we look at the monthly time frame chart. There's no topping pattern that we see. Price is above the top of its profile, above a green oscillator and change line. It is bullish. In the case of the uh, weekly time frame chart, all I have is just that consolidation we were talking about. Now, the next real resistance level for it is 4546. That's its daily oscillator and change line. So, Mark, that's going to change as price moves up and down. But you can use uh, the high from a couple of weeks ago as basically your target for that. On a daily time frame, daily time frame, let me just see. I'm uh, off, off my other screen. I just want to see if there was a completion of an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside out here so give me a moment to do that visually it looks like it is but i just want to make sure and it, it now nah, it did not complete an a to b equals cd to the downside nonetheless 
And not every pattern is going to bottom with that. Not every market is going to bottom with that pattern out there. What we do have here, uh, Mark, is prices trade above that red oscillator and change line with inside that new daily profile out there. So it's a suggestion that a further rally should continue or should unfold. But 4532 would be the number that you're looking at. If price can overcome that, I really 45, 46, remember that's that weekly oscillator and change line. Then you're all clear up to the top of the weekly profile, 46.75. But I don't see anything of significance from a topping standpoint, from the monthly, from the weekly. Uh, the daily, let me just uh, take this, open this up just a bit more. So the daily did top with roads momentum indicator signal. So the A to B equals CD pattern is still potentially in place. It'll be in place. The B point is the high mark probably, as you know, as May 6th. And if that is not taken out, um, then you still could get the full price projection to the downside, which would be 41.33. Not going to make that call just yet because price is back inside that profile and above that oscillator and change line. But that still has some potential. Now, if you can get it close above that top of that daily profile, you know, that would be another positive. I don't see anything here on the intraday chart. So your specific question was, does it look like this has more upside potential? And the answer to that question is yes. So thanks for taking the time to write in. That was Mark D. So now let's go back to the, uh, just simply to the equity markets out here. Last week, when we were together on Friday morning. We were taking a look at new profiles. And there are three new profiles, four new profiles that have formed out here. Each of the equity future contracts. So let me give you those numbers. They're helpful to you. Bullish and structure is the daily time frame for the ES Mini. Your support level is at 38.99. Your point of control is 39.89. That's a level that price closed above on Friday. And if you get it closed above that again today, then it increases the odds that price makes a run for 41.68. Now I say it increases the odds because price still will have to overcome one other level. And I'll switch screens here. Let me see. Oh, geez, I wasn't even on the black background screen. Well, you're, you're probably looking at each other, you know, Google-eyed. So, so, so let me do this here. Let's stay with. Let's stay with. Let's stay with the white background charts because I think I can read the profiles off a bit. So here's the bottom of the profile down at the 38.99 level, and if price can overcome this oscillator and change line. So first, it's in a bullish structure. Typically. When you close above the center of a bull structure profile, it indicates that the buyers should have enough strength to push price up to resistance. However, there's that oscillator and change line, and it's red, and that's a really critical level. That's a real critical level of resistance. If the market's turned down from here, we shouldn't be surprised. I don't think that's what's going to happen based upon the signals that we got on uh, Friday of last week. But right now, the line in the sand, the resistance line in the sand out here is that red oscillator and change line currently printed at 40.28. Let's just call it 4030. When the price can close above 4030, then the odds really are increased. That price will make a run for 4168. The NQ also formed a now the what the ES Mini also did was it completed an A to B equal CD pattern. So if you take a look at last Friday's candle, you'll see that's a bullish engulfing candle. For me, and I would say for you too, the way that an A to B equal CD pattern completes, the market will tell you. And the way that markets will tell you is either with bullish or bearish reversal candles. In this case here, you had that bullish engulfing candle. You had that for the NQ as well. You may remember if you were joined us on Friday, the NQ didn't complete its larger A to B equals CD. What it did was it completed the A to B equals CD pattern within that C to D leg. Again, a bullish engulfing candle. Your support level there is 11,875. Your resistance zone is between 12,622, 12,995. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So I'm getting right you with the profile levels that formed last week. Uh, we take taking care of the ES and the NQ. Uh, the NQ did complete an A to B equals CD pattern along that C to D leg, as I mentioned. Now, you'll see for each four of the daily time frames that price has stalled out, at least in the ES, the NQ, and the Russell. The Dow hasn't made its way up there. Uh, has stalled out at that red oscillator and change line. So if price can close above those levels today, uh, that would be a signal of a further, at least a further counter trend move to the upside, but because we've got these uh, completed patterns out here, it's possible that it's more of a bottom than uh, signaling to us a counter trend rally. But first things first, price has to take out resistance. Those are the red oscillator and change line levels. In the case of the Dow, the Dow equity future contract, again, completed along its A to B equals, or the C to D leg out there, generated a bullish engulfing candle, has provided us with new profile levels, the bottom of which uh, is support is 31,435. The center is at 32,011. And the top is at 32.875. In the case of the Russell 2000, bullish structure daily profile, supported 17.23. 17.48 is the uh, center. And 18.25 basically is the top of its profile out there. Um, so you've got these new profile areas on a, a daily time frame. Uh, you have completed patterns uh, for the most part on the daily time frame out here. And we have some completed patterns on the weekly time frame. So let me show you what we have on the weekly. We'll change screens here. Give me a moment. And we'll go in. With, so on a weekly basis, if you take a look at the ES mini, same A to B equals CD. Now, what you can't see here is that Friday's candle session for the ES mini was a bullish hammer candle. And that's it's really important. You know, you, you, you really want to look using candlesticks on their own. It for me is not worth the hill of beans out there where you want to be using candlesticks, and it doesn't matter what patterns it is that you trade, you want to see those candlesticks form at the completion of your pattern, whether it's something moving up, something moving down. You're looking for the cavalry, uh, that's the buyers and sellers, to give you the signal as to what their intent is. That doesn't mean that it's a no-brainer and it's going to hold up by guaranteed, but those are the types of signals that we look for. Now, in the case of the NQ out here, it really didn't get all the way down to its A to B equals CD price projection. It didn't need to. And the reason that it didn't need to is because it formed a perfect three drive to a bottom pattern out there. And 
last week's NQ daily time frame is a bullish hammer candle. And that's what you want. That's, again, another pattern out there. So you get A to B equals CD. We've got three drive tops. You've got uh, butterfly patterns out there. What you're really looking for is you're looking for the cavalry, you're looking for buyers and sellers to communicate to you that, uh, okay, the uh, buyers are now the ones that are in control. And that's, in essence, what a hammer. A hammer candle is basically telling you that the market is attempting to hammer out a bottom. Now, we've got a pretty large wick inside these hammer candles from, from uh, last week's action out there. So the question becomes, you know, where do you buy a hammer candle? Typically, if we get this, I doubt that we'll get this, but who knows whether we'll get it or not. Days three through seven, if you can get down to the middle section of the uh, of the hammer candle out there, between the middle and obviously the low, those are, in essence, your buy points out there. You'll see in the case of the Dow equity future contract, it hasn't completed its A to B equals CD pattern on a weekly basis. 37.48 would be its target. In the case of the Russell 2000, it's basically come close to completing its measured move out there. So it was in a consolidation pattern. When you break through consolidation, he give his, gives us a price objective that is equal to or greater than that consolidation. Hasn't made it all the way down to the bottom, but may be close enough for our line of work. So we've got a number of bottom signals out there in all kinds of, well, we're just taking a look at the general markets out here, but really in all kinds of uh, equities. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Here are... <coughs> <coughs> Here are the weekly time frame charts, so you can see those candle formations. It's the Dow that is the weak link out here. It did not form any kind of weekly bottoming pattern confirmed with a uh, bullish reversal candle, but we did get that for the ESCNQ and the uh, Russell 2000. So that's the general markets. We do have another question that's come in, <coughs> so let's go to it, and we can always come back and take a look at uh, uh, the uh, general markets as well. This one's coming in from Alan P. And Alan says, would you take a look at the TLT? So absolutely. If we go to a three time frame chart out here, <coughs> TLT. Now, the TLT, the best underlying instrument, in my opinion, for us to go ahead and uh, take a look at, it's really going to be the 30-year treasury. But I'll give you the TLT parameters out here. And the TLT right now, Alan, is just simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. Your resistance zone is 119.30. It's really going to be between 116.80 to 119.30. That's what the TLT is telling us. We go take a look at the 30-year treasury, it may be a different animal out there with regard to profile levels. And that's what we really want to be able to take a look at. Uh, but uh, and the support level is going to be 113.45. That's on the daily time frame. If you look at the weekly and the monthly time frames here for the TLT, you have no profile levels. Well, you do have profile levels, it's just that price is below those areas. So that says that price could continue to move lower. So let's do this here. Let's switch from this chart and let's go over to my nine panel or my eight panel chart out there, I guess I, unless I've added a new panel. Uh, let's go to my eight panel chart and take a look at the actual 30 year treasury. So if you give me just a moment, we're going to change the uh, screens out here. You'll see our multi time frame. And in the upper left hand corner, it's going to be the monthly. So on a monthly basis, price has made its way back to a potential level of support. It's not really a potential level of support, it is a level of support. That's at 139.14. We're trading at 139.29 right now. 139.14 is the TD9 count breakout level. Now, price is pulled back on a monthly basis. Uh, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal. I do see an A to B equals CD pattern. If it did get a, a monthly bullish reversal candle, then you would, in essence, on a monthly basis, have a buy the D point pattern. We don't have that, but we do know the 30 year treasury is on a monthly basis sitting back at support. The weekly time frame last week. Uh, completed or confirmed a TD9 count. It'll complete the pattern this week. Uh, lower low conform and still validate that pattern. Um, so you have a bottoming pattern on the weekly, sitting at support, which can be a bottom on the monthly, and the daily actually did not complete or confirm a Rogemintum indicator bottom. And it didn't because it hasn't yet generated the bullish reversal candle out here. So all that's occurred on the daily time frame for the 30-year treasury is price trading inside its uh, uh, profile out there. And let's see, what else do we have? Nothing else much here. So I'm gonna go back to the, you know, you just asked me to look at it. So I don't know what the position is that you're trying to take. If you're trying to sell uh, out here, would I, would I spend time trying to, even though thinking that 30-year treasury is gonna head lower, would I sell right now? And my answer would be no. Now you could uh, let me let, let's do this here. Let me let me actually get to another set of charts here for the 30-year Treasury for you. If you give me just a moment, we'll find it. 
And here we go. So again, another multi time frame view of what we've got. So in essence, the weekly chart is suggesting to us that price should eventually make a run for 131.22. Now, what my charts, the white background charts, um, didn't show was a new profile that is attempting to form. So we've got that now. I'm using my synthetic version of this contract out there. That's why it didn't show on the white background charts. I'm using my advanced Doppler tool for this. So you do have some support at 138.01 or resistance at 142.21 out there. I think we just have a bunch of consolidation going on, Alan, out here. But if you're trying to sell into this, then I'd wait for price to get up to resistance. Right now, that says 142.21. That's the top of that weekly profile out there. Steve Broads with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to a uh, question that has uh, come in here. This one from uh, Michael P. Michael writes in. Hey, Steve. Hello, Michael. Mike says, I went short Shopify today at 361. It seems to me it's breaking lower. Where would you put a stop and a uh, target to cover, Mike, in uh, Pennington? So, uh, Mike, I've got the eight panel. Oh, I don't. I've got the uh, three panel chart up here right now. So let's just stick with the uh, black charts here for a moment. You've got price below the weekly and monthly profiles out there. I mean, in a moment, we'll go over to the white background chart, see if there's any kind of bottoming signals or anything for you to pay attention to. And in the daily time frame, what you have is price consolidating with insider, trading with inside its daily profile. So your support level here, Mike, and, and this is a bullish structure daily profile. And so support is between 326.05 and 362.04. The low so far this morning was 358. Resistance is 434.01. 
So your first question was, where should you put a stop? It most certainly should be at least above the top of that daily profile. Now, the average true range on Shopify is 48 bucks a day. So another way to take a look at your stop is you can take 48.50 times 1.272 or 1.618, some type of Fibonacci expansion, and uh, just simply have it, whatever that number is, so 48.50 times 1.6 is going to be, what, 75, 80 bucks, something like that, 75 bucks, 70 bucks. Say it's 70, you know, $70 above today's close could be another area. But that 70 should still be above the top of that daily profile, 434 out there. Let's go switch screens out here. Uh, so now you know where the resistance level, at least where the sellers are at. Um, and that's coming from your daily time frame. Now let's go switch screens and see what else we can find to help Michael with this trade. So here on the multi-panel set, we can see that Shopify's got a nice momentum indicator top. Price is approaching a breakout level of 280-208. Price of price, that's, that could be an area of support, no bottom signal there. Price is stretched on the weekly chart. That's generated a momentum indicator signal, but no bullish reversal candle. When this did top Shopify, it was that same pattern, momentum indicator top that formed on November 26 on a weekly basis. So you need a bullish reversal candle to identify a bottom out here. The daily time frame, however, did confirm a momentum indicator bottom three days ago with that bullish engulfing candle. Now, what we have here is price just consolidating with inside that profile. So you've got a valid bottom. Price hasn't taken out resistance. If we take a look at intraday charts out here, we do see some bottoming signals, 195, the 130, the 65. Now, what I'm going to share with you is really probably the make or break numbers, which is really, I think, what you're calling and asking for, is what is really, just cut to the chase, Steve. Well, I'm just going to cut to the chase by taking a look at these charts out here, or at least that's what I was trying to look for. And I'm looking for a time frame where, to see if uh, uh, where any moves higher, price found resistance. But what I do now, now that I cleaned up this chart just a tad, what I was going to say to you is that uh, you can see that uh, we haven't seen much now um, action above a 195-minute a, a TD9 count breakdown level. But I do see a period here in late March where price was just consolidating above that area. So whereas on a quick chart on my little more dirty chart out there with more indicators, I, I couldn't see that as clearly. Because price is approaching or could be approaching a TD9 count breakdown level. And that mic is at 424.88. So to the upside, even though I've given you the uh, price point of the top of the profile at 434.01, you know, if you close above 424.88, you then close above 434.01, that's going to signal that it's possible that uh, being on the short side of the trade isn't the right thing just yet. The last bastion of hope to suggest that being on the uh, short side of this is the wrong thing would be if price could close above this 195 minute TD9 count top and that is at 487.99 so I don't know if that's the type of heat that you want to take when you're at 361 probably the answer there is no so you might want to keep this on a tight list from a daily standpoint because of the uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that did form last week out there and the new profile that is bullish in structure and price trading into the support zone out there. So I hope that provides you all the information that you need. Thanks for taking the time to write in and have a uh, magnificent Monday out there. Okay, no other questions that I see at this stage here. I don't believe there is anything inside of the Tiger's Den. So let's do this here. Let's take a look at uh, what's going on inside the New York Stock Exchange. So interesting. Uh, this thing on Friday morning, when we began the day, uh, price inside the New York Stock Exchange, not price, but the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator, which is the difference the between, it's the 19, it's the difference, it's the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Now, I'm not showing the advanced decline line here, but that in essence is what it is. That then is used to create the summation index. The summation index is just below. When that uh, changes from green to red out there, green tells us when the advanced decline oscillator is above zero. Now, when the advanced decline oscillator, so it's gone from the extreme oversold condition, which was oversold is just below minus 150. You start getting, you know, we're minus 225 and, and so forth. That was getting into the extreme oversold level. In two days' time, uh, the market breadth has been strong enough to uh, get back above the zero level. We're at 9.32. Now, one day above the zero level, does not make a bullish market. But two days in a row does say then 
that buyers would be the ones that are in control. And we could see a run up to the 150 level out there. So the, you're not seeing the chart? Son of a gun. Sorry about that. Uh, so now I get to do this all over again. I, I, that's my, my one gripe about Discord is that you just can't see the chart that you're on. And, and then I end up doing this type of stuff to you guys. It's a, Otherwise, everything is a great, hunky-dory, but man. So here is that chart. Again, you're looking at panel number two. Really, you can look at panel number two, panel number three out there. Um, and so you'll see when the line is red, the advanced decline oscillator is below the zero threshold level. So we're just above it right now. I don't know where we're going to end the day. But uh, it's, it has been very strong market breadth. If this continues, I'm going to have to go back and take a look at that advanced decline information and take a look at the uh, Zweig uh, indicator, the Zweig thrust model out there. Um, but that's, that's for another day. That's nothing that we need to uh, take a look at. But what you do need to know is that price is above that zero threshold level, closes above that today, and then closes above it tomorrow. Then it's communicating to us this indicator that uh, buyers are the ones that are in control of the uh, market. We talked, I spoke about the spot volatility index uh, during the uh, uh, 1 o'clock update. Take a quick uh, look at this. And here we can see that price is quickly approaching its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day exponential moving average is currently printed at 27.14. Price is at 27.84. So if this is just a counter trend-ish move, then where price should find support inside the spot volatilities is that 50-day level. And then we would see resistance inside of the ES Mini out there. Now, I don't see resistance. I would just say we would see it turn down. If, on the other hand, and I think this is more likely the case, we'll see price close below. I don't know about today, but we will see the spot volatilities 50-day exponential moving average give it up, and price will get below that. Then it's signaled to you and I would be the spot volatilities would go target us lower Bollinger Band. Now, this Bollinger Band reading, if you're putting this stuff on your charts out there, is set to a 50 to 1 level. I believe the default is 20 to 2. So for the spot volatility index, I found it to be more useful to set that to 50 to 1 out there. Because we are in a bullish structure daily profile for the ES Mini, because we had a close above the center of that profile on Friday, because right now we're trading above the center of that profile, which is at 39.89. We're trading at 40.26. A close above 39.89. And if you combine that, if we did get a close below the 50-day expense moving average, that would be your recipe for as close to, uh, would, uh, as, as, as high a probability as you can get that where the ES Mini is targeting would be 41.86 or 41.68. A little dyslexia. See roads with TFNN. Be great. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got a request to go take a look at the Great Panther uh, Mining. Great Panther Mining. Uh, GPL is the ticker symbol out there. It's for one of our uh, denners. And uh, so we've got our black background screens up here. Uh, we did get a nice uh, bullish uh, piercing candle, bull sash candle, I should say, on uh, Friday's price action. So uh, did we get an A to B equal CD to the downside? So our A point out here is March 11th. I'll use for a B point, the low, on the trading day of March the 29th. The C point the uh, following day, uh, that certainly is not an A to B equal CD pattern. That would give us a problem. That would, that would put it out of business out there. So on the daily time frame, no A to B equal CD pattern. Um, the weekly basis, monthly basis, price is below profiles. You do have a new profile that's forming today, RY. And so your support level here is 17 cents. Your resistance level is 20 pennies out there. So I'd say if you get a close below 17, odds favor that this is going to make a further move lower out here now let's go look at the white background multi time frame charts see if there's some other news out here that we can share with you on a monthly basis i've got nothing price below the bottom of its profile below red oscillator and change line that's a bearish situation weekly chart not assisting us either the daily time frame out here i'll just simply expand this out no bottoming signal now price did pull back into this uh, swing point from february the uh, first now that swing point on february 1st had volume of 2.2 million shares and we traded into it on thursday with 2.7 million 3.9 on friday today so far at about 1.3 million but price is still within inside that swing point it hasn't rejected it it's just testing that area with lighter volume what you can also see out here ry is that uh, price is below that red oscillator and change line so, um, you know, that's a bearish signal, too, but price is holding support. But watch that 17 cent level. Again, if it fails, it suggests lower price. And lower price, I would think, would be the low of that swing point from February 1st. And that is at 16 pennies out here. Um, so what you'd be looking for is price to get down to 15 cents or somewhere below 0 0.16 and then close back above 16 cents on something on less than 2.2. Did I say 2.2? What was the volume there? 34 million shares. That's the volume that you would be uh, looking at there. So if I look at Great Panther Silver, you know, there's not the intraday charts aren't going to assist us here. There's just not enough uh, activity. So those are basically muted, just the daily, weekly, and monthly to assist us. And I hope that helps you out with regard to Great Panther Mining, GPL, is the uh, ticker symbol out here. I don't have any other requests that I see just yet. I don't see any other requests out here. So now we've got to figure out where is it, you're welcome, where is it that uh, we can look at to assist us. So let's do this. Let's uh, let me get back to another set of charts out here if I have them open. Do I? I don't. Shoot. Okay, so I've got to go. I wasn't planning on that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to open it anyway. I'm going to open it anyways. Okay, all right. There we go. 
that'll help me. We want to go take a look at SoFi. S-O-F-I is the uh, ticker symbol. It's from one of our dinners out there. Had a huge, uh, so uh, the messages had a huge four-day bounce after dropping 80%. Do you see this as a start to a bigger run higher? So let's go find out. We're going to let these white charts uh, populate out here, S-O-F-I. And I'll get that going on my black background charts here momentarily just to see what we can see. Okay. So uh, while this is popular, well, yeah, okay, uh, this is popular and this is helping us. So in the case of SoFi, trading out at 703 as we speak right now, not enough data on the monthly time frame, although on a monthly basis this could form a road's momentum indicator bottom, but hasn't really traded long enough, you know, to, to know whether that's the case or, or not out here with regard to the signal. We don't need that. What we have is uh, last week was a TD9 count bottom. For SoFi on a weekly basis, formed a nice hammer candle as well. So at the completion of a pattern, like a TD9 count, you sure like that. So you've got a bullish hammer candle, and price right now is trading above, just above its red oscillator and change line. As we expand out the chart here, when was the last time we were above the oscillator and change line? Well, that would take us back to November 19th of 2021. So this week, if price can close above it, and we're trading really right on it right now, the actual level is... Uh, 6.95, let me make sure, is that correct? Yeah, 6.95, we're trading at 703. So that would be the one of the positives that you would be looking for, is to close above that red oscillator and change line. And then, because you're trading, now the profile itself, you only see two lines, if you can see them at all. The bottom of the profile is at 647. The bottom in the center is at 647. So that should be a very strong level of support. Resistance is up at the 1011 uh, area, and the TD9 count breakdown area is at 1057. So price on a weekly basis it has a nice valid bottom inside of uh, SoFi out there, and you like the way that it's looking right now. The daily time frame on Friday generated or confirmed a road's momentum indicator bottom. It did that when price gapped to the upside. In gapping to the upside, it also gapped above a bearish structure daily profile. Nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. And that's what we would say when we take a look at a bearish structure daily profile. So your specific question is, does it look like, like this has a bigger run to the upside? And the answer is yes. Now, what price needs to really do, as you can tell, is get above this prior swing point out here from May the 4th. And that's up at the 717 area. So that really becomes your battleground. If price can close above 717, then the daily time frame is suggesting that price should be able to make its run to 1010. So that would be a nice move. A $3 move, that would be a 50% move out here inside of SoFi. On a 195-minute time frame chart, let's go see what its uh, TD9 count breakdown levels have been doing out here. They've really been acting as resistance. So this one is beautiful. This one, eh, we did see a, a little bit of a close above it. Uh, the 195-minute uh, breakdown areas back in the uh, end of uh, March, March 29th, for a couple of, uh, more than a couple of hours out there. But nonetheless, 736 is a resistance level. 809 is a resistance level. This is the 195-minute chart that we're taking a look at. This did form wave number seven. That's letter G as a, a bottom. So you've got another bottoming signal there. So, yeah, SoFi does look like it wants to continue to move higher. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, let's go to our next question. How do you like to look at the new high, new low readings? Um, I don't really look at it that often, only at extremes. This is from the dreaded pirate Z. So we have two Zs inside our Tiger's Den out there. So um, with regard to new highs, new low readings out there, um, typically we take a look at that more when we get those Hindenburg omen type readings and so forth so don't really look at it what the way i would take a look at the advanced decline line is if price is moving higher and the advance uh, the advanced decline line is moving lower out there setting up some type of a divergent pattern out there so i hope that answers your question i'm not really big on uh, patterns uh, that doesn't mean they don't exist it's just not my bailiwick out there with regard to new high new low readings and what they might or might not be flip wants to take a look at apple and the question is is apple building cause i I believe AAP. Whoops. Let's get let's get the right ticker symbol out here. AAPL. I believe the question is: Is this building cause to go higher um, or bottom uh, yet to be uh, tested? So let's go take a look. Let's let uh, the screens here populate. See what Apple is uh, doing. Uh, let me see if there's anything new that I. So there's a new daily profile forming today. So this is kind of a bearish signal. And bearish signal because the new profile is forming above price on a daily basis out here. You can see the uh, top and the uh, center of that new profile, 158, 
18, 155.41. The uh, bottom of that profile is at 149.87. So it's, it's right here, it's where that letter A is, part of the Chapman Wave uh, tools out there. So that has formed above price. Now typically, Flip, when a profile forms above price, that is a bearish message, it tells us about overhead supply. We come back from this break, we'll finish looking at that one. And Uber. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day, five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the markets real-time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So I'm not suggesting that you short app. You got new profile that is forming today. That is above the uh, that is above price. We got wave number seven count a couple of days ago. So you've got a valid bottoming signal out here. And uh, what price should do is at least should get up to the bottom of that profile. That's in the 149.87 level. The oscillator and change line is 150.82. If it can actually overcome that level, then we'd see it move into 155 to the 158 level for Apple. As we take a look at uh, any. He's deleted that. That was a nice smooth move. We can see on a weekly basis, price pulled back to its breakout level, 143.16. On a monthly basis, the bottom of its uh, monthly profile. So, yeah, there should be should be some more counter trend move, at least inside of uh, Apple. Had a number of requests uh, come in. I really would love to be able to get to all of them. Uh, let's go uh, see what I can get to. The first one was, I believe, to take a look at uh, Uber. 
So if we take a look at Uber here, I'm just going to do this for the daily time frame. As we take a look at Uber, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom that should take price up to its oscillator and change line to 2482. If price can close above 2482, you've got a new profile here. That should take a run to 2740. That's what I see when we take a look at Uber. Another request came in for the SMHs. In the case of the SMHs, it's the weekly time frame chart that you want to focus in on. Why is that? because there is a valid three drive to a bottom pattern. The first drive is right here, January 28th. The second drive is March 18th. And the third drive was on Friday out there and you had a nice bullish hammer candle. You also have wave number seven on a weekly basis. So the SMH is should, not a guarantee, but they've got valid bottoms on the weekly time frame, and price should be able to make a run to the 246.68 level. There was a request to go take a look at um, Disney, I believe. Here is uh, Disney for its daily time frame. Disney has wave number seven, a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Fri that was confirmed on Friday when price gapped to the upside. Price should go target the 113.19 level. So we got through a few of them. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next after that. Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. But please have a magical and a magnificent Monday. And thanks again for joining us.